And suffering is real. It, mm. it really yeah. is a real thing where you people I know world. that have suffered and they're still like, God, you didn't come through and this, is, this has happened. This person I prayed for has died. Mm. And we don't understand it on this side. Mm. And this is why one of the things I always pray is, let your will be done because he is sovereign. Yeah. And overall, we're just humans. We just think, oh, yeah, we got this. We're controlling it. And it's only when you're flying in an airplane, you're like, whoa, we're just little, your little ants. We don't really got this thing going on. And, and, and yes, suffering is what I was doing a study recently on, on Job and just understanding why did he allow that to happen to Job? Why did he allow all of that? It's another facet. It's another side of our Heavenly Father. But one thing that I learned is that he is sovereign. Yeah. And that when he says and when he does, we still have to trust him. And even though we may not understand it this side of eternity, yeah. one day we will. Yeah. And it's hard because we don't have all the answers and we won't mm. understand it all because our minds are not like literally, I uh, always say like a tiny cup and you're trying to fill an ocean with this cup. It just cannot contain it. We mm. don't know everything about God, but we have to trust him. Yeah. And it's a reality, and I really believe prayer causes us to understand that side of him. And I understand that there is that side of God. There is wrath, and there is, oh my gosh, God, you would allow that to happen. And then there is this side of him. But we understand that he's a father that loves us, mm. and that he reigns. And, 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 he's, and, he's, and it's okay as well to say sometimes someone may ask you a question, you don't know. Mm. Because so many times we feel that we have to give some kind of answers, yeah. and then sometimes that just probably not relevant mm. and not, that's not going to help that person. Mm. What about if someone is, they've faced rape or abuse or they're going through something? Mm. Um, what's our view on that with God being sovereign? How does that look? Mm. Um, and yeah, what is the character of God in that situation? Mm. Mm. It's, it's a hard one and I, I've been there and I know what that's like to have that abuse and to wonder why did you allow for that to happen? You know, couldn't you have protected me and, and, and shielded me from that? But again, there's a sovereignness and, and what I have learned and from this, this is just a story I love to, to give stories and give analogies, was I was reading a story once where there was um, an ant, a little ant, and this ant was carrying um, this thing. I don't know why. For some reason, it thought, oh, no, ants do. They carry things bigger than their body weight. And it was carrying this thing up its back all the way. Like, why have you got me carrying this thing, God? But it's just a story. God has had the ant to carry this thing up the hill, up the hill, up the hill, up the hill. And this ant's carrying this huge thing, bigger than its body size, up the hill, up the hill, up the hill. And when it gets to the hill, God's like, Set, rest it down, just rest it. And what happened in the story was there was a woman who had climbed to the summit of a mountain and she'd literally got there and her contact had come out and she couldn't see the beauty. She couldn't see after all the climbing, she's rushing around trying to find this contact lens. And there she finds it on the back of this ant. And obviously she then can, you know, put it in and everything. My story is sometimes God would have us go through things as painful as they are or as difficult as they are, it's for somebody else. It's another story. It's always about his glory. And even though you're like, why am I going through this? It's, it's, it's going to be recycled for somebody else's benefit. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It's painful when we're in that situation. It doesn't make sense to us because you're like, God, this doesn't make sense. But it's like, Right now, I need you to go through this because when you come out the other side, when we think about Christine Kane, there is so many other people as you come through this journey that is going to come through yeah. it as well and it's going to rescue so many others. If we don't allow it to crush us, mm. to destroy us, mm. to make us bitter, to make us, you know, mm. rotten inside because things can do that, problems, situations, pain can make you go, no, forget it, I don't want to know. If we can allow it and we just give it to God, this is hurting me, this is hurting me, but I'm giving it to you. He can use it to recycle and bring glory to his name. Mm. But it's always hard to understand that. And I, I understand that as a person who has actually been through abuse myself. And now when I've come at the other side of that abuse, I'm able to help other young girls. Mm. I'm able to rescue, I'm able to encourage, I'm able to empower. Does that make sense? It's almost like prevention is better than cure, but you're also helping somebody like, I know what you're going through. Let me help you through this mm. because I've been there, done it, 
worn the T-shirt, read the book. Yeah. When I say that, his sovereignty doesn't mean that it was his will for us to be hurt, like for myself. Mm-hmm. As a young girl growing up, and I suffered abuse, and I was like, oh my gosh, is that what God's will was for my life? It just means that he can use it and turn it around. Mm-hmm. And I really believe that it will always glorify him, but he carries us through the pain. And I think sometimes what can happen is we can often get um, a, a different mindset to who God is, his character, and, and trusting him and going, well, actually, God, why would you allow that? And, you know, but it's nothing to do, he hasn't on purposely said, this is what's going to happen to you. It's the world we're living in. It's the brokenness of man. It's the sin. It's the selfishness of people. What happened? But even in that, he's still protected. He's still been there with me in that situation. Mm. And I believe that now I'm old enough and I'm through that. He's using it. He's using it every day to help others. One of the things that we used to learn about in Shine, which is a beautiful course that we do, is that when God made our hands, he never intended hands to do harm. But yet as humans, we use our hands for harm. And that was never, never his intention. When he created us, he created us to do so many things. We can collect things, we can hold things, we can do so many things with just our hands alone. Mm-hmm. And so in that, in that breath, what I'm saying when it comes to suffering, when it comes to things that are like beyond your control, he had never intended for that to harm you. But now that it has, because we're in a broken world, he will use it now to honour and glorify because you've come through stronger. Does that make sense? I'm hoping that all makes sense. I think you actually posted a meme the other day on social media that said, is our prayer life changing our lives or is it changing the world? I did, yes. And that really resonates, just what you've said. Mm. Because, yeah, counted a joy when we go through trials. It sounds ridiculous, like how can you? Mm. But actually when we think about life not being our own and being to serve others or to, and he, I, I don't believe God proposes any of those things. He doesn't no. put us in those situations. It's the fall of man mm-hmm. that brings about sin and brings about mm-hmm. all of that. Yeah. Um, but he doesn't give us more than we can bear. That's right. It's mm-hmm. important for us to know what language to use mm-hmm. in yeah. certain scenarios and circumstances, because so many times, because we are Christian, we just use a Bible verse that may may work for us, Mm. but may not work for the other person that we're talking to. Mm -hmm. So we have to be so careful when we address certain scenarios or situations that we go into, and we just drop a verse on a person, Mm. because that person could have been, you dropped that on me, but that doesn't mean nothing to me. It may mean something to you, it may be a loaded verse for you, but that's why we, we have to be intentional be intentional sometimes when we are talking, when we are praying, because you don't know what that person has been through Mm. or where they're at, and you are praying a certain way and talking a certain way that may put them into maybe a worse place than a better place Mm. after you're praying. Mm. So um, we have to be mindful of certain scenarios when you go into places, just like we was talking about maybe abuse. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. A person may suffer abuse and just the way you may conversate with them and talk to them. I, I think you have to sometimes choose your words yeah, and we have, yeah. to, we have to be mindful of that as well. Yeah, exactly. Because we can't just go in there, gun blazing and say, God will do this, God said this, this. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You, have to, you, you have to meet mm-hmm. the person where they're at. Yeah. Sometimes when I'm in a difficult situation with someone, I'm just like, God, give me the words yeah. to say right yeah. now. <laughs> because I, 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 I don't know what's about to come yeah, out of my mind, yeah, but it better be your words I know, than not know, mine. I know, I've, I've been there, Grace. And, <laughs> and you're, like, you're like, even before you even pray for the person, you could be there. Me and Nikki has done it, where you're going to see a person that's dying on a sick bed. Mm. And you're like in the room, but you're like talking to them, but you're talking to God in, in the, the same, same time. time. In one breath. It's a gift or wisdom, isn't it? It's where Spiritual gifts. prayer becomes so important, doesn't it? Because some, we just can't. Sometimes it's just a listening exercise. We're just there to listen yeah. and be ears and, and yeah. a body to to receive what their burdens are, and then we just mm. intercede with them right there yeah. and then, or when we take it away. And that's where prayer is just such a gift, where we can yeah. just pray with people in difficult times. And and I think 
no matter if someone's a Christian or a non-Christian or a stranger or someone close to you, I don't think anyone ever refuses a prayer. Like, no. you can say, can I pray with you right now? And they'll yeah. be like, yes, please. Yeah. 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 Always, yeah. always, always a need for it. Yeah. yeah. Has anybody else got any other questions? I had one more. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, I'm a young person, if you didn't, if you didn't know. Yeah, um, you know that, Jemima, come on. <laughs> <laughs> and in this digital age of um, increase of being social over the digital age, there is, um, I wouldn't call it new, it's new to me, um, of, um, you know, like affirmations mm. and, um, and meditation. Meditation has been around for a while, but I wanted to ask, What's the difference, if there is a difference, between like affirmations and um, stuff like that, meditation, um, but also praying? I, th- I, I think affirmations, mantras, I've heard people using things mm-hmm. like that where they are speaking words over their life. They're all good, but it's really about ourselves, isn't it? And so with prayer, it's about a supernatural friend. Jesus and God and the Holy Spirit, the, tr- the Trinity, they are supernatural beings who we can talk to. Because if I talk to Tito or I talk to you, Jemima, or I say to you guys, help me out, be like, I, I, can't, I can only help you to a certain... Nikki, I can tell you to say this. I can tell you to, you know, um, maybe bow down three times, spin around, touch your head, and that making me feel good. But you actually can't help me because you're only human. Mm. And that's where prayer and the power of it comes in because we're talking to somebody who is not human yes. and he's able to break through situations where it's beyond my control. It's him, he's God, he's all being, all knowing, omniscient, all the names, all the omnis, he's God, he's omnipresent, he's all of it. And that's the difference between affirmations and prayer. The Bible says that um, the prayer, uh, the powerful prayer or the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous person, we've said that, is uh, avail. It, uh, Avail if it's such an old word, but let's use it for it, it benefits. It, it will it will do something more than just a mantra or an or an affirmation or or a quote or it's much much more. It's it's like having I don't know um, a grenade or I'm not saying something negative, but just the power, just understanding the power that we have. That 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 walkie talkie one to one. God, I can talk to you. Can help me through this. A, a quote won't help me. I'm now on my knees. I'm. Um, you know, bleeding, I'm shot at an affirmation, a mantra, yeah, it might help me get, get through something, but he is the one, ultimately, mm-hmm. he is the one. And that's, for me, the difference. Yeah. yeah. Shall we pray? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Shall we wrap up in prayer? Pray. <laughs> Mark my prayer. <laughs> so, Father, I just want to say thank you for this time that we were able just to talk about prayer and what it is and having a dialogue and a relationship and a conversation with you. And There's so much more to know about you, God. So as we continue to walk this walk, this faith walk, this love walk with you, God, that you'll continue to reveal more and more of yourself, Lord. Even the things that we've discussed today, that it would help somebody else on their journey. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.